Book Dragons, I'm here today to do my January reading wrap up. I'm gonna structure this a bit differently because I always tend to do a mid-month mid wrap up unless like my life gets super crazy or I don't read a ton of books. So how I'm gonna frame this is I'm gonna tell you guys my stats first. I'm gonna tell you all the books that I completed for my game and if I think I completed enough books to be able to buy books. And then I'm gonna go over any of the other books that I read in the second half of the month that didn't kind of correlate to a game. Game. I'll be honest, a lot of my audiobooks never correlate to a game. Sometimes they do, but very, very rarely do they just because it's some, it's mostly random stuff that I'm picking up. Sometimes they're pulled from my physical TBR. I'm trying to get better at that, but not always. Um, I did read some St. Martin's Press titles this month, so my stats are going to be a little bit off about what I'm talking about, but I am filming reviews for those books books when I can post them because I did wind up having some reads I wanted wanted to chat about so whenever I can do that video I will post them and I'm gonna keep reading the books and just not reviewing them because I really do like the others um so yeah the stats is I read 19 books in January which is really really good um, I read an um, I read an average page of 6486 I read 209 pages a day which again I definitely read more during the weekend physically, but I do read more during the week audiobook wise. Um, and then uh, my most read genre was mystery, which is interesting. Um, I read eight books with rep and eight from authors I read before, and my average pain count was 341. That is really like an ideal book for me. Like that is the perfect size. I had six five star books. Um, I had four nine star books, three four stars, and nothing below that, and my average rating was a 4.11, which is actually incredible. I read three new releases. Um, I read eight backlist, um, and eight from last year. Definitely in the first half of the month, I do definitely read a lot more from like the, the year before, just because those are the books that populate my TBR. For my breakdown, now this is how I read them. This has nothing to do with books like on my TBR or like physical books just because I like to do that stats. But yeah, so just keep that in mind. Um, six were, I read six physical books. I listened to 11 audiobooks and I read two ebooks. So um, I'm trying to get better at reading ebooks. It's just a struggle. Um, I started seven series. I continued in four. I caught up with four. I read seven standalone and four companions. So, again, a solid stat for sure. I think that's the only thing that I track. Oh, and then I got one arc, two from Audible, three from the library, two from NetGalley, seven owned, and two from Everland. And I think there was one from Spotify because I've been doing that as well. Um, and then my genre breakdown is I read one YA contemporary. I read four mystery, one contemporary, three YA fantasy, two middle grade fantasy, one graphic novel, two romance, two historical romance, and one indie fantasy. Um, and yeah, so let's go through the game and I will kind of chat through if I physically have a book, what I thought about it, and if I talked about it in like the previous month, I'll just send you to my mid-month mid wrap-up. So I had to read one YA fantasy book, and that was a St. Martin's Press title. So if you want to hear my review on that, check out when I post that. Um, but I did, want to, I did want to read it again. Um, my second young adult fantasy book that I read was actually in the second half of the month, and that was Powerless by Lauren Roberts. So let me go get that book. So this was a fun time. I'm actually vlogging this, so you guys will see my full books in a vlog. But I really like this book. I gave it five stars. It definitely gave me Hunger Games and Red Queen vibes. But basically, you follow this main character named... Oh, I don't know her name. I cannot think of her name right now. What is her name? Hayden, and she is known as powerless, which means she has no power, but she kind of pretends she's kind of like psych, like that character. He, she kind of pretends like she could see the future, even though she just kind of picks up on body cues and stuff like that. But she winds up getting forced into this competition when she winds up saving the prince from certain doom and things kind of go from there. It is a fun time. Very, very captivating. I do see why people have said it gives you Red Queen vibes because there are two brothers in here that, of course, gives me Maven and Kai vibes or Kai's and the Prince in here. 
I really, really like this book. I thought the end was super shocking and super surprising. There's a novella coming out that follows a character that I really enjoyed, so. Definitely a five-star read. I think that it's very, very tropey, but the characters were working. The book was bantering. I was really, really content, and I gave this one five stars for a review. So definitely excited to read the sequel book at the end of this year and also the novella. Um, and then... The next book that I wrote was Dungeons and Drama by Christy Boyce. I will attach a photo here. It's like a five star for a review. I talked about it in my mid month wrap up because it was the first book I read for the month year. I loved it. I gave it five stars. Go check out my mid month wrap up where I chat about it. Um, and I also read Hollowthorn, which I will attach a photo here. These were both for eARCs. I gave this book four stars. I talked about this in my mid-month wrap-up. Go check it out. I gave it four stars. It's a middle grade fantasy book as well, and it's a sequel. So I I did enjoy it. I gave it four stars. I think I like book one a little bit more, but the book, the end of the book was 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 stronger, and that's why I got four stars. Um, and then I had to read an adult fantasy book, which I try to read an adult fantasy book every single month. And the book that I read for this prompt was Bake a Fellowship of Bakers and Magic by Jay Perner. This book I gave five stars to. I really like this book. If you like Great, Great British Bake Off and Lord of the Rings, I think you would like this. It definitely gave me Legends and Latte vibes, but a little bit more intriguing, a little bit more fascinating because there was a baking competition involved. There's a main character who's a human and winds up going to this baking competition where elves normally are like the leaders because they use magic and humans can't and she winds up having to enter this baking competition and I had a fun time. There's a lot of found family elements to it. It's very very cozy, very very sweet but it did, it did give me legends and latte vibes. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this. I think I heard about this from Riley Marie so I picked it up and I'm so happy that I did. It was I was feeling slumpy in the middle of the month and I'm so happy I picked this one up and I gave it five stars. Um, and then the next book we are going to chat about is um, my list book, and I wound up DNFing my Laura Taylor Namey book. I will attach a photo here if I remember, but it was a contemporary and I just was not feeling it, so that's why I wound up DNFing it, but I'll touch a photo here. And then the next book that I read is another one that I talked about in that early video. Um, oh, sorry. This was the one. When, um, when We Were Them by Laura Tara and maybe that I went up DNF. So, unfortunately, that book didn't work for me. Um, but the book I read blurred by my favorite author for a, for one of the prompts I got was Forging Silver into Stars by Bridget Kemmerer. I gave this five stars. Go check out my mid myth wrap up. I think it was a great way to start the series and also, like, a great way to kind of expand the world because this book followed very different characters from the first series. Um, but still kept those characters at the heart of the story and I liked it so but we got two new characters definitely a fun read and I really liked it and I'm excited for book two in the series whenever we get it um and then the next book I read the next two books I really didn't finish because I didn't have any physical books for my collection which is what this whole challenge is about but nothing that I had really fit the prompts so I didn't read something for debut for I, I, I didn't read any debuts from my physical TBR. I had other books, but none of them were like debuts, so I'm not gonna count those. So I didn't complete two prompts, but not completing two out of 11 is not bad. Um, and then for a book with an animal on the cover, I read The Baker and the Bard um, by Fern Haunt. I gave this three and a half stars. I really liked the idea. I just thought that it was very, very quick. And I did talk about this in my mid-month wrap up. And then the last book that I'm going to chat about in this way um, is a book gifted and I got Enchanted to Meet You by Meg Cabot, which I also got from Spotify. And this was just a fun, fun story. Like, I really like this one, um, but I did talk about it in my mid-month wrap-up and I gave it four stars. So go check out that video if you want to see my full thoughts, but I didn't like it. So now let's get into the books that I read in the second half of the month and we'll go from there say that I did have a few St. Martin Press titles so I won't be talking about them but let's kind of chat through the books that I read in the second half of the month that were not connected to any like challenges because these were just books I read at random and a lot of these are audiobooks just because that's where my freedom kind of comes in my reading life so I wound up reading A Rogue's Rules for Seduction by Eva Lee. I will attach a photo here. 
rec that I got from Christy. Christy reads a lot and I really like this book. It's very hard to find second chance romances in the historical set but I like this book. I haven't read the other two books in the series but I just picked this up like on a whim and I'm really happy that I did. Um, there was a historical romance um, reading challenge going on or like a vlog off that people were doing and I just at the end wanted to pick up some historicals so I picked up this one this one is very very spicy so spicy books like real spicy books are not always my thing but I did really like this I like the second chance elements I like the isolated setting I like seeing the characters again and I love the second chance dynamics so I gave it four stars I definitely want to go back and read the other books in the series but I like this one and I gave it four stars for video um and then the next oh no I'm not gonna be able to find it um, the next book that I read was another historical that I had on my TBR for so many, for so long, and that is The Duke Heist by Erica Ridley, and I really, really like this book. This is kind of my favorite elements of contemporaries, but it has a very, very strong found family element, and it kind of gives me Umbrella Academy vibes, I'll be very, very honest. But you basically have these four to five kids that are orphans, they are kind of adopted by this man, they all have powers in some way, or like skills and she's the girl her name is chloe and she is um what is she i think she's like a painter or no maybe she's a thief and she's a thief and she kind of is helps her parents her family keep their money but a painting was stolen from her family met a couple of years ago before her benefactor died and she's on a quest with her family to get it back but she winds up kidnapping instead of kidnapping the painting she wind up kidnapping the duke and i just thought it was a fun time the found family dynamics are so sweet in this and i just loved it i loved at the end how the male main character found a family and that just put out like such a such a warm heart on my face obviously it's a happily ever after but i want to read the other ones book two is queer i think it's an lgbtq plus story but i'm really intrigued to keep reading and i'm just so happy that i got this it also was signed by the author which means this one's definitely gonna stay on my shelf for a couple of years to come but yeah definitely like this i gave it four i'm um, five stars for review definitely one of my favorite new historicals that i've read recently um and then the next sorry my battery is gonna die so i'm trying to talk a bit faster if possible um and then the next book that i read um was powerless which i talked about in my game um i also read a the fellowship of bakers and magic which i talked about earlier this one i gave five stars to as well um and then the next book that i read was the impossible imposter by um Diana Rayburn the next book in the Veronica Speedwell series this was if you watch my reset vlog I always pick a series to kind of focus on and for the next couple of months I'm going to focus on the Veronica Speedwell series so this is the next book I read here is the cover I really like this book I thought this one was like a solid book I will admit I have really liked the Veronica Speedwell series the last two books haven't really hit the best this book just worked I think because it's really dived into Veronica's past and it had some frisure between her and Stoker and yeah basically someone from Veronica's past came back and she had to kind of figure out if he is who he claims to be and it had a bit of fissure between her and stoker there was a lot of found family elements in the story as well and i gave it four stars definitely a new favorite in the series and i hope to keep reading this series this month and next so i can say that i'm fully caught up and start a new historical um romance or historical mystery series um okay and then the next book that I read was a surprise. Um, I kind of did a bit of swapping and I want to talk about one more thing, but I wound up finishing The Ravenous Dead by Darcy Coates. I think I'm going to pick up these books audiobook wise because it really does feel like I'm reading a TV show, which doesn't always work for me. I'll be very, very honest. Um, but I do like the characters. I just think the story is a bit simplistic. It kind of reminds me of Medium. I like the found family elements of the story, but the writing style is not grabbing me in. I thought the elements were fun. The, like the mystery was fun. It definitely gives me Scoob, Scooby Gang vibes. But the writing style is a bit too simplistic. So I'm going to pick up an audio for the Twister ones and see if I like it. Dead. But it was okay. If you want to try Darcy Coates and you're not a big horror fan, I would check this book out because I do like the characters. I'm just not a big fan of the writing style. Um, and the next book that I read is... So I'm going to try to wrap this up quickly, but the last book that I haven't chatted about that I wanted 
Shadowbound is Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shauna McGuire. This is the second book in the Wayward Children series. I actually have to give this book back to my friend because she loaned it to me like three years ago. Sorry, Sarah, if you're watching this. But I wound up liking this. I think I should have probably reread Every Heart is a Doorway because this follows Jack and Jill, which are met in that book. I like this book a lot more than I liked the first book. And I think that being in their worlds were just so interesting. And for only like 187 pages, the story packed quite a punch. So I'm really excited to read these in a quicker time fashion just to kind of get back to these stories and these worlds. But I really like this story. It really, really worked for me. Um, so let me go over the two books that I DNF'd because I talked about one. But again, I wound up DNF'ing When We Were Them by Laura Taylor Namie, which was one of my list books. And I also wound up DNF'ing After the Forest by Kel Woods, which I may come back to. But I think I might listen to it and I don't think I need to read it physically because it was boring me a little bit. But yeah, that is my um, January to wrap up. Um, I am going to let myself buy books next month. I think I did everything. So all the prompts and stuff, I can buy myself eight books, which is really exciting. What I think I'm going to do next month, because I think I'm just going to take all the physical books that I remove from my TBR or that I read and not on my TBR and kind of make that the number. Because then I think like it will kind of keep me from going crazy. But eight books this month I can buy. Let me know in the comments what are some books you read and what was your favorite book. If I had to pick a favorite, I would probably say The Fellowship of Bakers and Magic or Dungeons and Dragons. If I pick one, or Dungeons and Drama. And if I had to pick one, I would probably say Dungeons and Drama just because that book hit. Um, and yeah, let me know in the comments what was your favorite book of the month. I would love to know and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.